Hello, it's Lawrence Romanowski from Calgary, Canada, and I've just finished doing a, a, a winter wheel swap on my 1989 Mercedes 420 SEL, and I thought this was a good opportunity to uh, go over some uh, ownership costs on this car. Uh, uh, probably seven or eight years ago, I did uh, a 126 buyer's guide on my um, uh, 560 SEC, which is the coupe version of this car, in three parts. It was quite detailed. It went through uh, a lot, uh, a lot of the uh, things that uh, you might uh, very well look at replacing, uh, and the overall cost of maintenance on that car. Um, back then, I don't think I did a, a great job of um, of conveying the fact that I'm in Canada, and of course the currency is different and the prices are, are different. Um, uh, right now. Um, uh, one Canadian dollar is worth about 0.75 US dollars, which means, of course, that uh, if I have a thousand dollar job in Canada, you know, it would be, you know, 750 in US and probably less just because the US is more competitive. Distribution systems are a bit more efficient. There's a lot more cars down there. There's a lot more uh, independence, quality independence. Uh, in a concentrated area and so forth. So, you know, if if, a, if there's a thousand dollar bill in Canada, it wouldn't surprise me that somebody in Oakland or New Jersey or something might be paying um, six hundred or six hundred and fifty dollars for the same um, for the same repair. Okay. And then so I found this car in uh, late 2012, and I got it on eBay. This is before Bring a Trailer had auctions, and um, it had thirty two thousand miles on it. And it basically looked brand new. So I, I imported the car. I think I, I won the eBay auction for $14,000. Uh, brought it into Canada and shipped it. And that another three or $4,000. So I think it, it landed on, uh, on the ground uh, in Canada at around uh, $18,000. Okay, so we'll go through and look at all the bills, but uh, when I got it, it uh, I, was, I was pleased with it. I was pleased with the way it was represented. Um, you know, but that isn't to say that um, we didn't have um, uh, some issues with the car. Uh, let's open this up here. Hard to do with one hand. All right, there we go. Uh, okay, so I got it, and then there was some fuel leaks, and uh, the fuel pump and the fuel filter live right behind the right behind the uh in the, the rear axle there and that was starting to leak and uh just from old rubber and so i sorted that out and then uh and then we still had some uh issues with fuel delivery and so i thought well it's it's you know and in, doing injectors on these cis cars isn't a bad idea um, because they'll leak after a while so I, I had the you know the fuel the fuel pump and the fuel filter and the injectors done and there was a bill and then I still had problems and it, that was kind of getting frustrating um, and then finally we found some gelled fuel in the lines and this car only had thirty thousand miles and I think you know it went to a wealthy family and then you know it just stopped getting used and it probably wasn't used for ten years before it was sold so then when it was kind of recommissioned. Well, then there's some problems you have with with cars that aren't driven regularly. So this car was symptomatic of that and had some fuel issues, some dried seals and some gelled fuel. And that took a few thousand dollars uh, to sort out. Um, we did uh, brakes on it. I had to do, you know, I had to get a winter set of tires on it. Uh, we did various tune-ups, etc. The, you know, the cars are subject to leaking from various places. Um, you know, this right here is the power steering pump, which will, uh, which will leak, and so we had to have that rebuilt. Um, various belts and so on. You can see there are new belts there. Um, you know, we had to do those. Um, I had, I, the, 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 apart from the fuel, the only real trouble I had with it was this intermittent stalling, and I couldn't figure it out. Um, you know, I went to some trouble, known trouble spots, like there's a fuel pump relay there. And so I thought, okay, well, why don't I try replacing that? And I did, and the problem went away. And I thought it was a hero uh, until it came back and I realized it wasn't that problem. And then there's this called the over, 
over voltage protection relay that sometimes gives trouble. Both these are about like a hundred bucks or something, not a big deal. So I thought, well, maybe it was that. So I unplugged it and plugged it back in and the problem went away. And I thought, okay, well, yeah, I'm definitely a hero again. Uh, uh, and then of course it wasn't that either because it stalled again and it usually did it when my wife was driving it um, who uh, uh, near the school or something so it was inconvenient and we couldn't figure it out because it was an intermittent problem and finally uh, I gave up and gave it to my uh, independent and I, I would have just given it to him in the first place but it's very inconvenient when you've got your child seats and everything else to get, get everything out of the car and transport the car to the other side of the city and whatever so if i thought if i can fix it in my driveway i'll try but obviously i didn't um and then we found out that it was the coil there uh and uh, the only way uh mark at alpine uh, could find it is he let the thing idle for eight hours until it stopped and then he could figure out why and the coil was arcing uh internally or arcing actually I think against this piece here if I'm not mistaken and he could see that and that's the only way they found out that it was the, the coil uh, which was the problem and it was intermittent so that drove me crazy uh, but we got that sorted and that was a couple of years ago and uh, I, have, I haven't had any trouble with it since um, when I was looking at the uh, the, uh, the misfire, I thought, well, you know, it's probably time to do all the spark plugs and the spark plug wires and so on, distributor cap, just get that out of the way. And I thought, oh, I'll just do that myself. Um, but I did have trouble with that because when I was trying to thread uh, the plugs in, even though I know it's aluminum, I know I was, I was being very, very, very careful. I, I, I knew not what not to do which was to cross thread the uh, spark plug holes. Um, I still couldn't get it in right and, uh, and uh, wound up tightening up on me. And I thought, okay, well, I better forget this. And then I took it back to Mark. And thankfully, I, um, uh, it was just a few threads that were damaged and there was no filings and he was just able to clear it up. But, you know, you, a lot of the guys who commented on the buyer's guide on the SEC that I, well, I do all the work myself. I get these parts, I get this, I get that. And it's like, yeah, you can do it yourself, but you know, I tried, I'm not, you know, I, I've been around these cars a long time and you know, I still bought an extra fuel pump relay that I didn't need and an extra voltage uh, over projection relay that I didn't need. And I still cause more harm than good by trying to change the plugs myself and stuff. So just beware. Um, they're easy cars to work on in many respects, but you can also screw them up if you're, if you're not practiced at it. And even though you might have some technical knowledge and so on, um, that's no substitute for a lot of experience working on these particular cars. Okay. Um, all right. So then uh, the other thing we did was shocks and, uh, you know, these cars will, you know, you'll need anything that's rubber uh, will perish after a while. So there's engine mounts, the shocks. And then uh, we, so we just did that recently. And then there was also these uh, bearings that live. I think you can see that there. Um, that's new. I guess that's where the radius rod uh, meets or attaches and those were shot. So that, that confused us because I thought that was um, a shock when it wasn't. It was, it was those that were, so anyway, I got new shocks and it got new bushes and so on. We also did an exhaust, which is uh, fairly uh, typical as well. So um, we'll go through all the numbers, but basically I've had this car for just over six years. I've put 25,000 miles on it in that time, which isn't a lot of mileage. Um, and uh, I would have spent close to 40,000 Canadian dollars for about 40,000 kilometers. Uh, so this car cost me, you know, $25,000 to run it for six years approximately. Um, and, and if I bought a new Mercedes S-Class, it would be $100,000 for six years. So 135 to buy it. At the end of six years, it's probably worth 35. That's 100 grand in depreciation. Um, so it would have been four times as much to buy a new Mercedes.